Hello again, my amazing kindergarten artists. Welcome to our fifth week of virtual learning together. This week, we're gonna be starting a new art class project together, but before I talk about our art class project, there is something I need you friends to do first. In Seesaw, below this video, there is a template that has many different kinds of lines that you need to trace. This is going to be a quick little practice tracing eight different kinds of lines, so that way you will be ready to draw these lines with me here on the video. So if you have not done this yet, please go open the template in Seesaw, trace those lines first, and then come back and join me on our video to start our art project together. Speaking of starting our art project, if you are done tracing up those lines and you are ready to start our art project, let's take a look at what our artwork is. I want my friends to take a good look and think about what you see. For example, I see many different colors. I see even many different kinds of lines. I even see hmm, some strings at the edges of my artwork too. What we are starting this week, kindergarten artists, is a Sarape-inspired line blanket. So, now that we've seen what we're going to be making, we need to, one, read our learning targets together, which I will in a moment, two, find out what art supplies we need, and then three, we are going to start our art project. So, here are our learning targets artists. As always, I'm going to read them first, and I want you to repeat them back. Are you ready? Here I go. I can draw eight different lines. So our goal this week is to try drawing eight different lines. And again, you should have practiced those eight lines in Seesaw already. So we should be ready to draw them for real on our art project now. Oh, but look at that artist, we have a second target as well that we are going to start this week too. So let's read that one as well. Here I go. I can apply good coloring to my artwork. So the other thing that we're going to talk about in this project is what good coloring is and how I can do my best coloring on my artwork, just like how you friends can do as well. Awesome artist, thank you for saying those with me. I'm gonna go ahead now and get our art supplies ready. Let's take a look at what we are gonna need to start our new art project. All right, my kindergarten artist, I have all of my art supplies that I need to start my new art project. I have my blue kindergarten art folder, which has papers inside it that I need. I also have a pencil with an eraser, or you can also have a separate eraser. I have a black Sharpie. Now, if you don't have one of those at home, you can also use a black marker. And then I have some coloring tools. Now, you can use crayons or markers or even paint if you have it at home. But I'm going to war warn my friends a little bit that if you do decide to use paint, it's going to be really tricky to color in your project well. So my recommendation for this project, my friends, is using crayons or markers. So please go grab these art supplies and get them ready because I am now ready to start our art project. First thing first, my artist, I'm going to go ahead and open up my blue art folder. And right away, if I've already finished all my other projects so far, the things that I should need should be right on top. One is this nice bundle of strings. Now, we're going to actually save our strings for next week, my friends. We will add them onto our blanket once we're all done coloring it. So I'm actually going to leave that in there and only take out this white piece of paper that's behind it. If you notice, my white piece of paper has some holes punched at the top and at the bottom. That's how you know it is the right piece of paper that you friends need. So again, I'm leaving my strings in my folder for right now, only taking out my white piece of paper, and I'm setting my folder now off to the side to get ready to do some drawing. Our goal this week is to try eight different kinds of lines. Now again, these should be the lines that you friends practiced in Seesaw. I'm going to go ahead now, and I'm going to talk about naming those lines and how best to draw them on our paper now that we have our paper together. Again, I'm going to do this step in pencil. That way, in case I make an oops, I can erase it. Here we go. Our first line that we're going to put right below those top 
pulls is our straight line. I'm going to start all the way on this very edge of my paper on this side, and I'm going to try to make my line as straight as I can. It's okay if it gets a little wiggly at times, but I'm going to make it as straight as I can all the way whoop, until I get to the other side. There's my first line today, my friends. Now, as we go, these lines are going to get a bit harder with every line we try. That's why I had you artists practice first. So, remember, the goal is to try eight different lines. It's okay if they don't look exactly like Miss Greathead's lines do. With that being said, the next line that I want my friends to try is called a dashed line. Instead of being a long straight line, a dashed line is more of a short straight line that repeats, just like I am repeating that short dash here on my paper. Again, I'll start on one side of my paper and go all the way until I touch the other side. There is my dashed line. All right. Again, if you need to pause the video at any point and catch up to Miss Greathead, you can, all right? I'm gonna keep going for those friends that are ready. The next kind of line that I'm gonna draw is what I call a wiggle line or wiggly line. It likes to wiggle up and down and its wiggles are gentle. They kind of look like little hills or little dips. They're not pointy. They're smooth as they wiggle. So please try your wiggle line next. We should then have three lines on our paper. Straight, dashed, and wiggle line. I'm gonna keep going again when you need to pause the video to catch up you can my friends. Our next line is called a bouncing line. The bouncing line likes to hop. It likes to go boing, 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 boing. Hear how it bounces across my paper? Boing, boing, until I get to the other side. So this one has smooth tops and sharp pointed down kind of lines. That's our bouncy line. I'm gonna keep going again. Remember, if you friends need to pause the video, you can. Our next line uses sharp points at the top and the bottom. It's called a zigzag line, and it goes up, down, up, down, up, down. Has nice sharp points like a mountain top. Up, down. Again, it's okay if your lines don't look exactly like my lines. It's okay that they are different. So let's do a quick count, see how many lines we have. I have one, two, three, four, five lines. We're already more than halfway done, my artists. All right, time for one of my favorite kind of lines. It's called a loopy line. It likes to loop around like a roller coaster. Watch how my hand loops. It goes loop, 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 loop. It's even fun to say as I'm drawing loop, 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 all the way across my paper. We only have two more types of lines left, my friends. Now, this next line is one of my trickiest kind of lines. I call it the castle line because it looks like the top of a castle would look like. I'm gonna talk about how to draw it. Listen and watch carefully. It goes over and down, over and up, over and down, over and up, over and down, over and up, over and and down, over, and up. That is our castle line. Again, if you need to try doing some more practicing in your sketchbook, or maybe even on a whiteboard, that is all right, my friends. Whatever you need to do to make your artwork the best, you can do it. We're now onto our last type of line today, my artists. This last line is a fun line. It's called a spiral or swirl. Watch. I'm gonna make a couple of spirals across my paper. They start to curve around like a circle, but instead of closing like a circle, they come inside of themselves like a snail shell. So a spiral spins and spins and spins into the middle. Spins and spins and spins. I can even make my spirals go different ways if I want to, but if you wanna keep all of your spirals going the same way for right now, artists, that is okay. So our goal today was to try and draw eight different kinds of lines. Let's see if I and you have met this goal. We're gonna count our lines on our paper. Let's see if we get eight. Here I go. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight. Awesome job, my artists. Again, your lines should look similar, but it's okay if they look different or even kind of strange sometimes. The first time I tried lines, they didn't always look exactly like these kind. Just try your best. Now that I have my lines drawn in pencil though, if I like how they look and I wanna make them permanent on my paper so they're nice and dark and easier to see, I'm gonna get out either my Sharpie or my black marker. Whoop, excuse me, Mr. Black Marker. You were trying to run away there, silly. <laughs> And I'm going to go ahead and now trace all of my eight lines using one of these two black markers. I'm going to speed this step up for you, friends. That way you don't have to watch me trace it. But as I'm doing it, I'm taking my time nice and carefully to keep my marker on top of those pencil lines that I just carefully drew. So when you, friends, are ready to trace your eight lines, please take your time to trace them as nicely as you can. Now again, my kindergarten artist, it probably looked like I traced those lines super, super fast, but I took my time and I just sped up the video to save you friends some time. So please take your time while you're tracing your lines. Once you're done tracing your lines, like I have all of mine traced here, so they're really, really nice and easy to see, it is now time to start talking about good coloring. Now, I really wanna express that this is a conversation that we are starting today, but as an artist, even at my own age of 28 years old, I still practice good coloring and thinking about what good coloring is even to this day. So it's not something that we just learn once and then we don't use it again. Good coloring is something that we wanna practice all the time as our amazing artists. So with that being said, I'm gonna decide now if I wanna use crayons or markers. I think I'm gonna go with my friend's crayons today. Good coloring has three rules. And normally in art class, I have you friends try to help me explain these three rules. I'm gonna start, I think, with my friend Red today up at the top. Now, my first rule is one of our easiest rules. It talks about staying inside of our lines. Speaking of which, I have a line right here, so I don't wanna cross over it by scribbling through it. I wanna stay inside of that line only. The other two rules, though, are a little bit harder to think about my friends. So I'm going to pause my coloring here for a moment and I'm going to let you friends think about, hmm, is that good coloring yet? Well, I did stay inside of my lines, but hmm, did I go all the way to my edges? Not quite. So I'm going to do the second rule of good coloring right now. I'm going to color all the way to the edge of my paper. Sometimes this rule might not always happen, but in this case, I want to color all the way to those edges. My third rule of coloring is all about looking at my color itself. So if my color here is supposed to be all red, hmm, why do I still see some large white spaces? If I wanna make it my very, very best coloring and make that whole part actually a nice true red color, I need to go back in, maybe push a little harder in some places and cover over any large white spaces. Because if that area is all supposed to be truly red, it should all have red all over that area. No large white spaces. Those are my three rules of good coloring. And again, this is something that I think about every single time I'm coloring. I think about staying inside of my lines, going all the way to the edges of my paper when I need to, and going back and coloring any large white spaces I might see. Now that looks like much better coloring. Now, your goal this week, my friends, is not to finish all of your colors, but if you wanna start a few of your colors, you can. Next week, I'm gonna talk about our good coloring rules again, and we'll go through those same three again, just as a reminder that every time we color, we wanna think about those three rules. Staying inside of our lines, going all the way to the edges of our paper, and filling in any large white spaces. That way I can make sure I am doing my best as an amazing artist, which I know all of you friends are capable of. So 
If you want to color a few spots today, that is okay. If you want to finish coloring your blanket today, that's okay. If you want to leave it for next week, that is fine as well. Because next week, my artists, we're going to finish coloring and I'm going to teach you a fun way to tie your strings onto the ends of your blanket. So with that being said, my artists, I'm going to stop here. As always, when I am done with my art project for this week, I don't need to take a photo in Seesaw. All I need to do is make sure that I put it safely back away in my art folder. That way I have it for next art class. So I hope you artists have a fun time trying out your eight different lines and starting some good coloring. Again, you don't have to finish all of this this week. And I will look forward to finishing it with you friends next week. For now, my artists, I'm going to say goodbye and have fun creating.